It's been a while since I've talked about these smaller pieces in my photography setup, so today I thought I'd share some accessories I've been using. Some of these I've used forever, and other things are relatively new in my kit, and I'm still kind of trying them out. I'll have links to all the things I talk about in the description if you want to check them out, and thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. The bag I've used for years to organize some of these accessories is the Peak Design Tech Pouch, and this thing is amazing at organizing smaller accessories. There's so many little pouches and compartments and dividers. The first thing I have in here is my memory cards and card case. This is the Rugard Lita case, and I have the version that's for SD and CF Express type A cards, but you can get these cases in a bunch of different configurations depending on what types of cards you have. It's a solid case. It feels very protective, and I like it because it can hold a lot of cards. It has 12 card spaces in it, but you can stack SD cards on top of the CF Express Type A cards, so I could actually get 24 cards in here if I really wanted to. The main memory cards I use are the ProGrade Digital V90 SD cards. I have quite the collection of these going on. I've used them for years. They're super fast, which is essential for shooting 4K video at 120 frames per second or burst shooting raw photos. However, I do find if I'm really heavily burst shooting raw photos on my Sony A1, which are 50 megapixels, like wildlife action shots, sometimes the buffer will get a little backed up with these. So when I want an even faster card, I have some of these Sony Tough CF Express Type A cards. These are nearly three times as fast as the V90 SD cards. They are so crazy fast. When I'm burst shooting, they have no trouble keeping up. But CF Express Type A cards are significantly more expensive than V90 cards, and V90 cards are already expensive. So they're the kind of thing that unless you are specifically shooting something that you absolutely need it for, you do not want to spend the money on it. I bought these mostly just for wildlife shooting, and also a lot of cameras don't even take CF Express Type A cards. And then I also have some micro SD cards for my drone and my GoPro. Honestly, I don't use any specific type of card. I'll use anything that's fast enough. Um, and I like that I can store them in this case if I keep them in their little SD adapter cards that they come with. And then to back up all of my cards, I use the Samsung T7 SSD portable drives. I have a whole collection of these. I've used them for years. I've always been so happy with them. I like the small size. They're about the dimensions of a credit card. I like that they come in different colors. I also have some of the T7 Shield version which are the same drive, but they just have like a protective rubberized casing. To be honest, I prefer the regular T7s because they're a little smaller and I can put Velcro on them to stick them to my laptop case where nothing sticks to the rubberized casing on these. They're super fast, really quick to transfer data to and from, and I also edit all of my videos off of these drives. They're absolutely worth the investment. And pro tip, my favorite way to label these is with post-its. People are not talking about post-its enough for gear organization. I just trim the sticky part of the post-it into a label and the adhesion is perfect. It stays on. I mean, this has been on this drive for months. It doesn't peel up. It can toss around in my bag. But when it comes time for me to wipe a drive and I want to take the label off, it comes off so easily. This is a post-it label on my memory card case. I just buy assorted colors so I can color code things. Speaking of labels, this is starting to feel a little like a craft video. Something new I'm using on my gear this year is glow in the dark tape. I saw some people using this on a recent photography trip and it is absolutely genius if you do nighttime photography, especially astrophotography. Because when you're shooting at night, you keep all the lights off around you so that you don't ruin the exposures you're taking. But in complete darkness, it can be hard to see where your tripod legs are or where that lens cap is that just fell. So if you add some glow in the dark tape to your gear, you'll always be able to see it. So I've added a strip to each one of my tripod legs. You could put this on lens caps. You could put a little bit on your camera body, anything that could fall out of your bag, little pieces that you use. I don't use a specific brand. I just went online and searched for glow in the dark tape. And I just think that's like the coolest hack for your gear. I want to take a minute to say thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video because there's nothing more frustrating than editing a project and realizing you just need that one clip of that one thing and you don't have it. Storyblocks has you covered. They have over a million high quality stock assets, including video clips, 
sound effects, and images that you can use in your latest project. And they have an unlimited all access plan that allows you to download anything in their library and you can use the assets for personal or commercial use. So if you're doing a project for a client and need a sound effect you don't have, you can get it from Storyblocks. So definitely check them out and I will have a link in the description. The next accessory I've been using is the small rig rotatable mount. This is one of the newer accessories in my kit and I decided to try it because I often find myself taking the same shot twice, once horizontally for YouTube or traditional media, and then again vertically for social media and reels and stuff. And on a regular tripod ball head, it's always a bit of a shuffle to recompose a shot from horizontal to vertical. If you tilt the camera over to the side, now it's not centered the same way, like if you had a beam or something perfectly centered horizontally. Now it's not gonna be centered. You have to re-level it. But this mount adds a swivel plate right around your lens that allows you to just rotate your camera 90 degrees. You don't have to readjust it on the tripod, re-level it, anything. And it feels very sturdy on my camera. I was actually surprised at just how solid the mechanism feels. And it just makes your life so much easier if you're somebody who shoots things both horizontally and vertically all the time. The only thing I don't love about it is now I have this thing mounted on my camera. It makes my camera a bit bulkier all the time, bulkier to put in my bag. So given this is something I'm still newly using, I think long-term that will probably be the make or break thing for me. Am I really getting enough benefit out of this? to also have that extra bulk on my camera all the time. Next is a really cool charger. This is the Bro9 camera battery charger. And if you're the kind of person who charges batteries from a bunch of different cameras at once, this is the product for you. It comes in both a two port and a four port version. I have the four port. You plug it in with a USB-C cable. So you have this center charging unit and then you buy these charging blocks for whatever batteries you have and they attach to the ports magnetically. And with four ports, I can charge four batteries at a time in any assortment that I need. Also, the little charging blocks magnetically stack together, so they're kind of easy to keep all in one place. Something like this is so important to me when I travel because at the end of the day, when I get back to my hotel room and I'm tired and I wanna go to bed, but I've gotta reset everything, I've gotta back up the cards, I've gotta charge the batteries. If I can't do something like this, then I'm stuck rotating batteries through a charger or swapping out different chargers in the one outlet in the room. Trying to get up in the middle of the night to swap things out or forgetting to get up and swap things out and then in the morning my batteries aren't all charged. So this is just so awesome that I can charge so many devices at once. Next, I always, always, always carry a sensor cleaning kit. Now, I learned the hard way that I always need to have one of these on me. A couple years ago, I was road tripping through New Mexico. I was in the desert, I was in the middle of nowhere. And while changing a lens, I saw that there was a speck of something on my sensor. And without thinking, obviously, I just quickly blew on it. And I ended up spitting all over my sensor, like very obvious, saliva. I was in the middle of nowhere. There was not a camera store nearby. So now I always keep a sensor cleaning kit in my bag. This one is from Visible Dust. It's pretty affordable. Speaking of cleaning supplies, I always keep a blower. I also keep a lens pen. This is a cool little dual ended pen where one side has a carbon tip that removes like fingerprint oils and smudges. And then the other end has a little retractable brush that you can brush away dust. Also, the Zeiss lens wipes are a must. These are little individual wet wipes for lens cleaning that are so convenient for on the go because you can keep them in a jacket pocket, a backpack pocket. I try to keep some of these in every bag I own and they're formulated for any type of lens. So I also use them on my eyeglasses. So those are some of the accessories I'm using right now. And I will have links to all these in the description. If you want to check any of them out, I would love to know what accessories you're using in your setup right now now because you just can never learn it all. I swear I could take pictures for a lifetime and I could look at someone else's setup and be like, what is that? I haven't seen that before. Like I am still, I can't get over the glow in the dark tape tip. I just think this is so cool and so easy. So let me know what you're using. I hope you all are well and I will see you in the next one.